Yeah, we're back. We're live. This is Jay Fidel. It's Think Tech on a given Thursday. We're talking about community matters and talking tax, talking tax with Tom Yamachika. Hi, Tom. Say hello. Hello, Jay. I knew you'd say that. Okay, we're going to talk about OHA today. The title of our show is uh, the recent fraud, waste, and abuse audit at OHA. Very important to talk about fiscal policy in the state of Hawaii because OHA is a government agency, unusual government agency, but nevertheless a government agency. I, you know, I think that, you know, a lot of people feel that OHA is a failure since it was established in the Constitution, the Constitutional Convention of 1978, <clears throat> hadn't done much. Um, nobody cares. There was this case, Henry Rice versus Caetano, that uh, determined that you didn't have to be Native Hawaiian to vote for OHA trustees. I'm not sure that people do vote uh, for uh, OHA trustees. I, I think they care less about well, that than they do about other choices. I do. Um, uh, okay, and I do too. Um, and you know, there was this really strange letter to the uh, Secretary of State, John Kerry, a few years ago where OHA claimed to be a foreign country. And we paid for that. We, the taxpayers, paid for that letter. The letter cost tens of thousands for the executive to write. And then there was a mistake, uh, you know, with Abercrombie and Kaka'ako, and where they made a deal with Abercrombie and they got all this land in Kaka'ako and found that the zoning and, in fact, statutory zoning prohibited the development of the condos they were uh, thinking about when they took that deal. And if you look carefully at Kaka'ako now, Kaka'ako Makai, there are no condos. And that's years later. Uh, then you wonder about leadership. You wonder, you know, uh, whether OHA could have been, could be a leader. Uh, it could have, in my view, settled the matter of TMT, <clears throat> but it didn't. It had very little effect, in fact, negative effect on settling that matter. And that would have been a real uh, feather in its cap, but it didn't do anything. It's not a pathway to higher office. I can't think of anybody who actually was an OHA trustee that took higher office in the ledge or otherwise. Um, you know, and you know, you like to see the Native Hawaiians make some traction here. You like to see them, you know, have more Native Hawaiian representatives and senators and legislature, more judges and so forth. But OHA does not allow a path for that. Uh, and then, of course, there's a problem with Hawaiian homelands, where there are, you know, dozens of Hawaiian homesteads that have never been, you know. Well, that's DHHL. That's a different agency. Of entirely. course, of course. And my point, though is that OHA could have been a leader in that, could have represented the interests of the Native Hawaiian people, and it didn't, no action. Somebody should say something. OHA did not say anything. So we got problems here. I mean, some people feel that one of the reasons we haven't had a constitutional convention since 1978 is because nobody wants to see OHA bite the dust. On the other hand, there are a lot of people out there who would like to see it repealed. Um, so what can we do to fix this? Well, the first thing we should do is have an audit and find out what's going on. So can you tell us the background of this audit at OHA? Sure. Um, I mean, one, the one reason why we're uh, concerned about OHA on, on talking tax is because you're right, OHA is a government agency. It's set up by our constitution and it's uh, set up to uh, protect and preserve uh, you know, the rights of the Hawaiian people. And uh, one of the things that... Uh, uh, it does is it has a large amount of money that it, that's at, at its disposal because of uh, the trust lands that were created when Hawaii became a state. So, uh, like it or not, uh, OHA has got control of a bunch of money. And, and they get more money every year from the general fund in the order of hundreds of millions. Uh, not so much, uh, but uh, uh, f from ceded land revenues, they do get revenue, yes. And that's hundreds, hundreds of millions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's a, a lot of money and it can be put to good use if the agency uh, is correctly functioning. Now, um, so uh, what happened was uh, the, uh, the, 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 the trustees uh, got together and, and uh, at the prodding of one uh, trustee in particular, um, they authorized an audit of uh, the, the books and records of OHA to look for indicators of fraud, waste, and abuse. Okay. Um, and uh, the, uh, uh, the auditor, one of the national accounting firms, uh, in the, I believe it's the top 10, uh, they came out with a, with a report 
and I think it was at the end of 2019, and they identified a number of uh, what, uh, what we call red flag issues, um, su such as uh, money being spent for a certain deliverable, but no evidence that the deliverable was, was ever delivered. Uh, that's, that's pretty serious. You would think so. Uh, there were uh, there, there was a lot of money disbursed for the uh, the Native Hawaiian election, the, the Native Hawaiian Rural Commission's election, uh, the AHA as it was called. Uh, about two point six million dollars of OHA money went to that, but instead of uh, OHA following normal practices of you know reimbursing expenses that have been incurred by you know the uh, you know the grant requester, uh, the uh, Nonprofit that requested the money said, "Hey, you know, pay us all the money in advance." And OHA did all two point six million. Was the two point six million spent? We don't know. Uh, where did it ultimately go? We don't know. Uh, th there were, you know, proposals and, and and bills for at least part of it, and that's you know that's fairly clear. But uh, but the election didn't really even happen uh, because of court litigation. The uh, uh, the election was called off. Uh, the um, uh, the nonprofit that was running it and the, uh, and the and the relevant state agencies had to basically say, "Oh, geez, uh, well, anybody who ran for uh, a seat on the a seat on the AHA gets it." So, so the AHA then becomes uh, a number of uh, you know a, a very large number of people, uh, and. Um, uh, some of the money that was requested by the nonprofit was uh, on post-election activities, and we don't know uh, if there were any and where and where the money went. So uh, that's uh, that's another issue. <laughs> okay, but um, in the recent uh, debates uh, that were held on uh, PBS, the PBS channel. Um, the, the trustee who uh, called for the audit, as well as his his opponent, and the um, the current chair of the board of trustees of OHA, you know, she was on because I guess she's running as well, and they had a spirited debate, and 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 the logic of the position taken by uh, the chair of uh, of OHA and uh, the, and the debate uh, the opponent of the guy who asked for the audit, uh, went something like this. Okay, um, the audit came out. <coughs> it didn't, it did not identify actual illegal activity. Well, of course not. I mean, auditors aren't, aren't cops. They're not the FBI. They're not the attorney generals. They're not prosecutors. That doesn't uh, mean, that doesn't mean though, they don't find things worthy of further criminal investigation and prosecution. They just uncover things in general. That's right. But, uh, said, said, said the chair of, uh, of OHA, the uh, Board of Trustees, well, uh, you know, since we didn't find the smoking gun, this $500,000 that we paid for the audit was a total waste of money. Oh. And it is on you. Mr. Trustee, who authorized this thing, it's on you now. That's kind of how the argument went. And then, and then of course, uh, said trustee's political opponent, uh, you know, jumps right on that and says, yes, of course it was a waste of money. You know, uh, it, was, it was to find the smoking gun. We didn't find the smoking gun. It was a waste of money. And... Uh, the same kind of thinking that led to these red flags in the first place. Oh, I think it's worse. Uh, I, uh, I, I, I don't, I don't. <laughs> what kind of logic is that? How blind do you have to be to, to, to equate, uh, you know, uh, not, coming up, not coming up with a criminal conviction with, uh, you know, everybody did everything okay. It's not the same. It sounds like Trump and and the investigation. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, well, I mean, that, that's pretty horrible. Uh, that is, but but the but the sad fact that is 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 that it's being made a campaign issue uh, in the uh, election over either one or both of these uh, OHA trustees, and and I think the voters should consider uh, what's going on when they decide to vote for OHA, which they can, by the way. Well, let, let's, do, let's identify you do not the... have to be Hawaiian mm -hmm. to vote for an OHA trustee. Right, that's Rice versus Caetano in the Supreme Court of the United States. The trustee who uh, advocated for the audit is Kali'i Akina, uh, who actually is um, one of our uh, one of our hosts here on Think Tech, you know. And uh, he's 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 very um, Akamai about about these issues. Yeah, no, I mean, I, I'm uh, I'm in a five hundred one c three, so I can't say much about political candidates, but you know, talk all you want, Jay. Well, I, I, I think uh, he's, he's the one, clearly, that can save OHA and is trying hard to save OHA. Uh, but the question is ultimately whether OHA can be saved with kind of magical thinking you're talking about um, to respond to the uh, audit report. That's magical. And so query, you know, what, what can we do to fix OHA? This audit report sounds like, honestly, you can help me with this. It, like, it doesn't sound like it's going anywhere, Tom. Uh, that's right. I mean, I don't think um, the OHA Board of Trustees uh, took any further action with respect to the report because of their conclusion that, um, you know, there is no smoking gun. But, uh, but uh, I respectfully disagree. And I, and I think uh, the Attorney General should look at it. I think law enforcement should look at it. Uh, I, I think that, um, uh, you know, there does seem to be um, you know, smoke uh, uh, where, where the fire was that may be revealed through further investigation. But I think the further investigation has to be done. Uh, you know, the corruption needs to be rooted out and dealt with and people need to be accountable. What's well, an embarrassment, you know, that we have this organization that was uh, created in a, in a very noble, altruistic way to help the Native Hawaiian people to focus their efforts and a it's failed and b it's wasted money and it's been involved in all kinds of abuses and magical thinking and we haven't we haven't had the um, you know the gumption i mean the community hasn't had the gumption to actually address that it took a long time uh, for Kali Akina to get that audit going and uh, i must i must say that he gets credit for that uh, at the same time um, the organization needs more now. It needs, uh, as you say, the attorney general to step in. It needs other people to look. It's just, it's the same thing as voting for OHA trustees. P people get the ballots. Um, they don't know who the candidates are. They don't know what the candidates stand for. There's precious little, um, you know, campaigning going on and precious little press on who's saying what, what platforms and so forth. For example, there are some trustees there that, are, that favor TMT. Um, there are some trustees that want to kill TMT. Um, I like to know that if I'm going to vote uh, on OHA trustees, and I'm entitled, and I will know that when I vote. But, but you know, uh, I, the problem I have with it is that, um, you know, it's like, um, it's like a, a sacred cow. OHA, you can quote me on this, OHA is a sacred cow. Nobody wants to touch it because it's Native Hawaiian issues, even though other people can vote for the trustees. And um, nobody wants to take a whack at it. It needs to be corrected. It needs to be looked into. This audit should be studied and examined by further investigation. Oh, yeah. I mean, just to give you another example, uh, there was a um, almost $100,000 provided to a nonprofit association uh, supposedly for scholarships to Native Hawaiian students. I mean, that sounds good, right? Um, but then the, the auditors took a look at said nonprofit association's tax return, uh, which is a publicly available document, it's a Form 990. Um, and the, the nonprofit's tax return for that period didn't show a dime paid out for scholarships. Isn't something wrong? 
something's wrong. So what, what happens to the money? There's a, a carload of money here. What happens to it? Is it getting, I mean, we know it's not getting spent on the right things, but is it getting spent on the wrong things? Well, we, well, we don't know. Um, you know, the money has gone out of OHA. We, we really have lost track of it after that point. So somebody should be asking the nonprofit, what the heck happened to your $100,000? So where, where would you start on this? Um, you know, is the internal, let's see, the Internal Revenue Service, do they get 990s from OHA? And OHA is a government agency. We, we always forget, you know, it's like a natural forgetfulness. We forget that it is an attached agency to the state of Hawaii. It's a government agency and it should be responsible under, uh, you know, the uh, transparency laws. Um, it should be responsible to procurement code. I'm not sure that it is or that it feels it should be. But I think theoretically, everything that applies to a government agency should apply to OHA, no? Right. Now, uh, even the IRS does recognize OHA as a government agency. And, uh, you know, government agencies don't have to file tax returns. And that's fine. Um, and, and matter of fact, that was, uh, you know, kind of brought up in, you know, the recent litigation uh, that was over the uh, limited liability companies that OHA created. Okay, because uh, OHA management for some time, you know, previous OHA management took the position uh, that it wasn't accountable even to the trustees because it had formed these limited liability companies uh, for specific purposes and they were supposed to run by themselves. Okay. Um, and we, we thought that was a bunch of crock and, and uh, uh, you know, some journalists uh, sued to have uh, the LLC's financial records opened up to the public. Uh, the LLC's said, you know, take a long walk off a short pier uh, and we were in court. One of the things that we found during the court proceedings was uh, that one of these LLC's uh, was also recognized by the IRS as a government agency. And so it didn't have to file tax returns. It did, okay. But, but, but the fact that the IRS recognized it as a government agency kind of undercut, uh, you know, the LLC's argument that it was independent from OHA. No, it wasn't. Not at all. So, uh, the the responsibility uh, as as a trustee of OHA extends not only to, you know, the the direct assets of OHA, uh, but also to these uh, limited liability companies uh, that were formed with, you know, trust assets and and trust monies. Um, you, know, you, you you can't insulate uh, responsibility just by putting it in a box. You know, you, you, it you know, has to be accountable to the public for that whatever's going on in there as well. Why may a why may a I false part being being part of it. it goes back to the sacred cow thing you know if if oa was an attached agency to dbed and dbed has a two or three um what do you call it government corporations that are really government agencies no question about it they don't file tax returns but they do report to dbed in fact dbed is all over them all over their executives even their middle management telling them what to do, watching what they do, watching, you know, the expenditure of funds, controlling their budgets in terms of the amount of money these attached agencies get. Everybody watches them. And in fact, it's a hamper in, in many ways. And on top of that, they have the sunshine laws to deal with and the procurement code and all this. So, you know, I don't know why it would be different from OHA. Uh, do you know where OHA is supposed to be attached? Who on the chart, who in the schematic do they they respond to who's supposed to be supervising them um they are supervised by the board of trustees i mean it's an independently established uh agency under our constitution so our constitution created it um and it it it, it uh, specified that it's supposed to be governed by uh, duly elected trustees and uh and that's how it is it's not answerable to any agency any you know 
uh, executive agencies. It's not answerable to the governor, uh, but it but it does uh, have some accountability, you know, through our legislature because uh, they get public funds. Well, the public funds they get are, are uh, as you as you said, they're. Uh, part of the uh, ceded lands program, and that's statutory. So the uh, legislature would have to change the statute. It's not just a budget item. It's uh, it's in the statute, and then a budget item. Well, so, but uh, budget items are in the statute too. So, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah. Bottom line is, uh, it sounds like the the flaw here is that there there is no accountability in the way it was set up. Um, they don't really respond to anybody but the trustees and the trustees don't respond to anybody. Uh, well, the, the trustees are supposed to be accountable to the people who vote them in, uh, just like just like the legislators are. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, and that's, that's kind of another uh, really good reason why uh, if you have a ballot that's in front of you and it has, uh, you know, spaces for for OHA trustee and, and, and you're wondering whether I should, whether you should mark the ballot, not mark the ballot, if you can make an intelligent choice, uh, because it does mean something. Yeah, a lot of people aren't marking the ballot because they don't know. And it's not just this year, although this year, you know, we're all motivated to vote more than before. But even in years past, as far as I know, a lot of people were not marking the ballot. Rice, Ravi Caetano notwithstanding, they were not marking the ballot. They say, I don't know who these people are. I'm not going to vote for them. And they live in a bubble in, in that way. And they have a relatively small electorate voting them in. Uh, but that doesn't mean they don't have politics, though. Can we talk about that? They're, they're got a lot of politics. A lot of politics. Can you talk about that? I mean, it's, it seemed like they're having fights, in fact, litigation, um, like all the time, fighting about everything. Uh, and that's very distracting, as we know. From the federal well, government. well, right now uh, the big uh, hubbub is about uh, they they are being audited by the state auditor list. Kondo, he uh, wants to see um, uh, unredacted minutes uh, from from the uh, the board of trustees meetings. Now, uh, the issue has come up because uh, during these board of trustees meetings, uh, the uh, the, the trustees can and, and do ask for advice from their their uh, hired attorneys, and when when if you and I were to do that uh, in a normal setting, uh, that would be what's called attorney-client privilege, and nobody uh, has the right to uh, to see what's in uh, that 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 communication. Uh, the the wrinkle here, though, is uh, that. Is Les Kondo an outsider? Because his office is also created by the same Hawaii Constitution. And um, you know, kind of kind of look at it this way. Now, if 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 you were my boss, I was doing something in, in you know the Kalihi branch office of uh, whatever company uh, that that you and I both work for, and I uh, asked for an attorney's advice on something. You get to see uh, what I asked for and what the attorney responded because you're my boss, you work for the same company, and we're assuming, of course, that the company, rather than me, is the one who hired and paid for the attorney. Okay, so you're, you're not an outsider. And the question here is, uh, are uh, or is the, uh, the state office of the auditor an outsider with respect to OHA? Uh, certainly the communications involved were attorney-client communications. That's clear, right? OHA hired an attorney. Uh, they gave advice to the board. You know, that's classic attorney-client communications. The question is, is the state auditor somebody uh, in the universe of people uh, that, that are not entitled to see? It all sounds like a perversion for me. I mean, if you take, for example, the high... High Tech Development, uh, Hawaii Tech Development Corporation, and any number of other attached agencies, which are government corporations. Um, they are served by the Attorney General. And uh, nary a meeting goes by with these agencies without having a Deputy Attorney General physically there to help them, uh, ostensibly. 
to give them advice, to answer their questions and so forth, keep them on the right path. Um, I, I don't know what would happen if they wanted to get an outside counsel. They'd have to find a way to fund that. And I don't think, it's, uh, I don't think that's easy. In this case, it sounds like the, the culture of, of OHA as an organization is they don't use the attorney general. They don't permit the attorney general to perform the same services uh, for well, OHA. Well, yeah, they, they, they don't have to. A number of, uh, uh, a number of agencies uh, have an exemption from the, from the statute that mm -hmm. basically said, there's a statute that says, you know, the attorney general is supposed to represent you. Okay, a number of agencies have, have exemptions including the Department of Taxation. They have, they have their own attorneys, uh, and I used to be one of them. Uh, and you know, this, is for, this is for you know, various and sundry reasons. Uh, OHA has an exemption as well. So, so they are allowed to, and they do hire their own attorney um, to advise them on, on, on different things. Well, for them to claim privilege and say the state auditor cannot you know, have these communications involving a state agency, it's perverse. We, we, we can't achieve accountability this way. They can do what they want and ignore us and thumb their nose at us. Um, and so, I mean, if you were, if I asked you uh, as the legislature or, or maybe even for a constitutional amendment, how this could be cleaned up, how we, we the public could feel that our money, hundreds of millions is being well spent and there is no fraud, waste, or abuse happening. And we do have supervisory rights, accountability in this organization. What would you do to straighten it out? I give you all the power you need. What would you do to straighten it out, Tom? All right, send the auditor in uh, first. To, so, so uh, you know, I'd need some information about what went wrong. What's, uh, you know, uh, where, are the, where are the bad spots? What we need to clean up? Um, and that's kind of what he's doing right now. And, and, the, and the legislature's hammer basically is they, they, they told OHA, look, if this audit doesn't get done, you don't get your money, period. Um, and, and OHA is now fighting uh, with the auditor in court and they, and they want uh, the court to order the money to be dispersed even without the auditor's report because the auditor is saying, well, you know, if, if, if I don't get these documents, unredacted, I'm not going to do my report. And you don't get your money, so there. So that's that's kind of the game that's be, being played well, even yeah. as we speak. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's, it's gone before the court, and, and what the court's uh, ruled on so far is, well, yeah, I looked at the unredacted minutes, and yes, yes these are in fact attorney communications. Yeah, we know that. But I think they've been fighting about the wrong issue. Minutes of meetings can be redacted. Minutes of meetings? That's extraordinary. No, no, I mean, there's uh, uh, the executive council's part. And, well, uh, there's always executive session. Yeah, executive session, yes. If, if that's what we're talking about, that, that's a, that has a cultural background, but I mean, a law cultural background. But if it's just the minutes of the meeting, um, this has to be straightened out, Tom, because it's a sore, it's an open sore. And there's so much money going into it. And let me enhance that by saying we need the money. You know, we talked about this so many times. We, the state, we need the money. And to throw it away into an organization that is abusing it and wasting it and being involved in fraudulent deals, even arguably, even, even you know, the appearance of these things is enough to lose public confidence in the state in general. Why is the state supporting an agency? which isn't, you know, providing information. No, I think you're exactly right. And, and, and that's, I think, the path we're going down. Uh, one, one thing that did happen is that the, um, uh, the executive director or the, the president of OHA, uh, uh, he, got, he uh, uh, is no longer there. I don't know if he got canned or if he wanted to retire or whatever it is. He's actually still working. Uh, with with another with another outfit, uh, I think it's in my building somewhere. Is, is it connected to OHA? I don't think so. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think they need a good investigation by some good investigators, and then we and we have to we have to look for, you know, actions 
whatever they would be civil or criminal. Um, and, and the trustees have to account for their actions and their are, uh, alleged fraud, waste, or abuse. Yeah, or, or the people who receive the money and, and uh, uh, you know, if they are found to have uh, wasted it or, or if they defrauded OHA, which is, which is possible, uh, then well, they should be called to account. Yes, and if OHA has been defrauded, it has an obligation to say something. You know, trustee has the word trust in it. You know, they are trustees to, and they hold all the assets of OHA, which is very substantial in trust. Every deal they make, every deal that fails, every negotiation, every expenditure, it's with trust funds. So I, I don't yeah, know so, how they so, can that. Yeah, keeping public trust is a very, very important component to that. And, uh, and that's, you know, what I think this issue is all about. Yeah. Well, I think it's relevant. And, and you and I, we should cover those things because the state is in duress and crisis financially and furthermore will be in crisis. Uh, when we get the next report of the Council on Revenues, uh, what do you think you're going to see there? Um, and, and what will that mean for the budget and, and the fiscal integrity of the state? What do you think you're going to see in the Council on Revenues? I think the bottom's going to fall out. But we shall see. We shall see. We should cover it, though. We should cover, you know, the fiscal policy in the legislature, which we do. We should cover these uh, other agencies like OHA, which we are, and we should cover wherever the holes are in the boat, so to speak. Yep, three more months before the legislature starts up again. In the meantime, next month is uh, uh, we we figure out who we're going to you know, who's going to be in that legislature to a large degree. Yeah. So the bottom line is, uh, people should vote for the trustees of OHA, and they should educate themselves. And they should do it right away, of course, because it's important that we vote right away. Um, but this is not something that you want to turn your back on because it's your money. Yeah. It is. Thank you, Tom. Tom Yamachika, really appreciate you coming down. See you in a couple of weeks, eh? Thank you, Jay. Glad to be on the show. Take care. Be safe.